Hello, my name is Stephen Upton, and in this short film we're going to take a look at Sanctuary Wood and Hooge Crater. They're situated near the town of Epes in Belgium, in what was formerly the Epes Salient. As you can see from the red arrow on this map, our takeoff point is just behind the British front lines as they were in 1917, and today it's just in front of Hill 62 Canadian Memorial. And we're going to fly up to the Menin Road and to see the little star features on the map where the arrow is, there where the craters are. And of course the Menin Road is that long straight road. Our takeoff point is where the arrow is indicated. You can see the little hand there now. This shows our flight path. We fly over the bottom end of the sanctuary wood, over what at the time was Zouave wood, which doesn't exist today, up to Hooge, back round again, and all the way back to Hill 62 at the bottom there. Those maps are dated January of 1917. Just behind the camera, only a couple of miles behind, is where the German army and the British army first clashed in October of 1914, what became known as the First Battle of Epes. Camera is now looking towards Epes. Just in front of us and all the way over to the right is Sanctuary Wood. We're now going to fly over it and you'll be able to see the trenches. By Christmas of 1914, the front lines had settled down to more or less where you see them on these maps. But over the next few years, fighting went backwards and forwards over this land. The land we're flying over really is almost sacred to both British and German forces, so many of their remains are still in the ground. The red arrow that's coming up now is indicating the trenches in Sanctuary Wood. Take note of how the trenches are not dug in straight lines. They're actually done in a zigzag pattern or sometimes called a sawtooth pattern. And the reason for this is quite simple. If a shell lands in a straight line trench it's going to kill everybody in it by the blast. Also, if the enemy managed to get into the trench, they could fire along it, and the trench then just would be impossible to be held. By having them zigzagged like this, we can tell this at one point was a frontline trench. These are what's called fighting trenches, or firing trenches. The ground here is still covered in the remains of many, many shell holes. But you've got to imagine that by 1918, there's no trees here. There's a few stumps of trees. What was called Sanctuary Wood was just a wilderness of barbed wire and trenches, a few stumps of trees, and the entire detrius of a terrible war. This land was fought over for about four years. You can just see a few shell holes there, the outlines, little circles, but the trenches now you can see very clearly. Sanctuary Wood museum and trenches are open to the public and are well worth a visit. I'm just going to play you a bit of music now while we allow the drone to fly around and I'll talk to you again in a little while uh, when I can describe the landscape we're looking at. As our camera pans up now, we can see the extent of Sanctuary Wood. Epes is over to our left, and Menin over to the right, and all of that is what was originally known as Sanctuary Wood. Just across in the distance, 
we'd have what's known as what was known as Shrewsbury Forest. Of course, all these names given to it by the British Army. There's Hooge in the middle there. Just going to put in a couple of red arrows now to identify areas. That area there is Railway Wood, top left-hand corner. That's Sanctuary Wood Cemetery, British Cemetery. And that's Hooge Crater Cemetery. And the crater itself is just there. And the village is there along the Menin Road. So all this area here was at one time a completely devastated wilderness. I must apologise actually for the quality of some of this film because very shortly you're going to see it's rather overexposed. Uh, I seem to be having a bit of a problem with my new drone in getting the settings just right. I think I just need to practice a bit more in the actual camera settings. But we're flying now towards Sanctuary Wood Cemetery. Sanctuary Wood is over to the right. And if you were to walk through these woods, you'd find the traces of trenches. But going to the museum is always the best bet here. Interesting shape, Sanctuary Wood Cemetery there. It's like in a quadrant. As we pan up, we're flying parallel, really, over the front lines. British trenches for a lot of the war were directly under us. German trenches over to the right. Ypres is over to the left. However, during the German 1918 offensive, they occupied all of this land right the way down to what was called Hellfire Corner, which is now a big roundabout. The direction we're looking in is towards the north, and it's an area where the Great Passchendaele Offensive took place in 1917, and was, again, I don't know how to overstate this, but a completely devastated wilderness. The weight of artillery fire that this land took, particularly in 1917, was unimaginable. And of course, the, the loss of life in these areas. We can just see in the top part of the picture, slightly right to centre, just gone off camera, the Bell Ward Lake. The Menin Road runs from left to right across there, perfectly straight road. Possibly a Roman one, I wonder. But look how big the huge crater cemetery is. There's thousands of soldiers in there. Can't actually see the crater at the moment. It's just in those little bit of woods, just slightly left to centre. But we're going to bring the camera back round and fly directly over it. But as we pan round to the right, the German front lines now would have ran straight across here. Where that green roof is, somewhere round about there, was a chateau at the start of the war. And that was known as Chateau Wood. And we're going to look along the Menin Road. We're right directly over the Bell Ward Ridge now. Just We follow that road now, just off camera. It leads to the village of Gellervelt, about a mile or so, that's all. And it was there in October of 1914 that in this part of the front, the British and the Germans clashed. That's Shrewsbury Forest to the right, as we just pan up. And now we've swung the camera all the way round towards Eeps. Eeps in the distance, panning round to the right. There's railway wood, and looking down now, see the red roof buildings just above that, there was a little bit of water. That's Hooge Crater there. It wasn't actually just one crater. It's the remains of several craters. This was on a little bit of high ground and was viciously fought over for year after year. I also believe I'm right in saying that it was here, in Hooge, where the Germans first used uh, flamethrowers, flammenwerfers. Terrible weapon. If there's any such thing as a good weapon, I don't know, but flamethrowers was... Um, not just the damage you could do, but the psychological effect of using them was terrific. But looking down now, you can see it's not just one crater, it's several overlapping craters. That building on the right is a hotel, and I've actually stayed in their bed and breakfast once. And you can walk down into their grounds, and there are the remains of German frontline defences. Concrete emplacements, on the, right on the edge of the crater. When you look at photographs of this area just after the war... It amazes me how the local population was able to recover it. For a mile after mile around here, there wasn't a single building, no trees, nothing. A complete wilderness of trenches and shell holes. 
There's a good view of the crater now. It's actually, if you look at this trench map where the arrow points, you can see there's three overlapping craters and another one over to the left. Going back to our aerial view, and you can see quite clearly three overlapping craters. That fourth crater, there seems to be no sign of it anymore. Swinging back round to Hooge Crater Cemetery. There's also a museum down below uh, by Hooge Crater that's well worth a visit. But this is the infamous Menin Road. I hope you found this short film informative and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I dedicate this film to the memory of all those who served in the Eeps Salient 1914 to 1918. Thank you for watching.